presence of a ranger, the unsuspecting stranger, had better know the truth of wrong from right. Cause the eyes of the ranger are upon you. Any wrong you do, he's gonna see. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Cause that's where the ranger's gonna be. Welcome back to the Blood and Black Rum Podcast. I'm Ryan from Coltsploitation.com, and I'm joined with my co-host, Martin. <clears throat> How's it going? Uh, we're doing well. Uh, well, as well as we can be after watching such a travesty. Which film is that, Ryan? I don't know. Let's let's go. Let's dive into it here. So, um, you can tell this is an episode he wants to get over with because he's like. <laughs> No witty repartee or bantering, just... Not an episode I want to get over with. I'm not going to jump right into it, into the film itself. I'm going to talk around the film like we normally do, or it's like a huge secret that you can't read the title of the episode to know what we're covering. You know, so we've covered Toby Hooper's um, original. We've covered the remake with Jessica Booby Beale, who throughout much of that movie has Nippons, uh, in a tight shirt because that was what the filmmakers had in mind when they cast her. Um, we didn't cover the uh, pretty recent um, prequel that came out. I don't know if you saw if you had uh, seen that that was a, a thing that happened a couple no. of years back. I think it, maybe no. in 2018 there was a prequel. Um, and we've never done some of the other sequels. Uh, like the fine Dennis Hopper movie. I've, to be honest with you, we're talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> uh, to be no, to be honest with you, and I think I probably said it when we did the at least the original or the remake. I've never been a big fan of the franchise. I've mm. only ever seen before seeing the remake way back when we did remake Halloween. Mm. Um, I've only seen the original and then the second one. Mm. I've never seen three. The Next Generation. Nope. I've never seen. Three or next generation either. Three D Leatherface. No, because uh, Leatherface to me is kind of stupid. I didn't see. Um, I haven't seen three Next Generation. Three D. I have seen Leatherface. Um, and you're right, Leatherface. I re- I didn't enjoy it. Um, because again, it's one of those movies where it was like, what was no one asking for? Oh yeah, the backstory behind why Leatherface became Leatherface. And that that was like the entirety of the movie. So so they, so they so Rob's somebody got a hold of Rob Zombie's Halloween script and like let's put Leatherface into it a little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously Toby Hooper's original is you know it's a cult classic. It's widely you know revered as like a great you know exploitation you know uh, half you know documentary. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. it's a it is an enjoyable film outside of that i i the mileage for me and the idea is incredibly limited because the intrigue of the first film comes within that premise uh what do you what do you think of two because it kind of i don't remember like that much but i remember watching it a couple of times on tv because in high school because it used to be on like amc all the time because that one really pivots away from the original, even though it's also by Toby Hooper. Um, it, it changes things up significantly in terms of tone and stuff. So I just wondered how you felt about it. But if you don't remember it, then. No. I, oh, like you said, I just remember Dennis Hopper's in it. And I'm like, oh, what a great career choice for Dennis Hopper. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Because like the mileage 
here doesn't it can't really carry you too far like how much you re- how much can you really do about a, t- a chainsaw wielding madman and his family members um, apparently if you rob zombie you can churn out four movies about it but uh, other than that um you know it is a limited scope and so that's why <laughs> you know what I, I just thought of you know what that's actually a great uh great comparison that uh <laughs> Uh, what the hell is it called? House of a uh, Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand Corpses. Basically, the hills have eyes and yeah. Oh yeah. Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, I mean it's no <laughs> secret that Rob Zombie is heavily inspired by uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre when creating that. But yeah, I mean, and actually, I haven't checked out the latest uh, movie that he made, uh, though I have it. I haven't watched it. Three from Hell. Um, but yeah, they're they you know they're all inspired in part by Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, but that's kind of why I think some people were excited about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Netflix movie, um, which had been slated for quite a while as being a new movie. Um, there was a few reasons to be excited. One, the story was helmed by Fede Alvarez, who did the Evil Dead remake. Um, so people were, you know, super excited about him being involved in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Um, to, to an extent, I mean, once it boils down to it, Fede Alvarez basically came up with the story um, itself and pretty much nothing else. Like, he, you know, he didn't write the screenplay or anything. So I think that was one of the reasons why people are excited and then now became, you know, sort of disappointed. But the other thing is that it was billed as a sort of a requill, right? So it's it, it, it was going to be the same uh, scenario as Halloween where it was going to take place, uh, you know, in the present day, uh, as though only Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original Toby Hooper's classic had taken place. So it was going to skip over all the rest of the sequels and, you know, forget about all the various canon elements that ultimately don't really make sense in all of the movies. Anyway, there's really not much of a canon going on there. Uh, just what all the filmmakers at the time wanted to keep in <laughs> for their movies. Um, but ultimately it j- basically just treats it as though like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original happened and it's now like a sort of true crime sort of thing, right? So like, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing that happened. People in Texas know about it. They're like, holy shit, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's like an unsolved mysteries. Um, but instead of, you know, getting Robert Stack or something like that, how you- dare you, don't you dare put Robert Stack into this pantheon. But Exa- right? that's what I'm saying. Instead of, of getting someone like Robert Stack to deliver that, they got uh, William Shatner yeah. in rescue nine one one. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's everyone's less favorite of the, those, that type of show. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like I, I get, there was some excitement around Texas Chainsaw Massacre, bringing it back for a requill, trying to do to that film franchise what Halloween did in the 2018 movie. Um, And then we eventually got it and we didn't get it as a theatrical release, which, you know, you, you would pretty much expect at this point, a big franchise like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, Why is that not going to theaters? And apparently the, uh, the reason it didn't go to theaters is because it, it did so poorly in its original showings um, for test screenings that they didn't want to have it in theaters. And so they did a, you know, like a nineties version of the direct to VHS Uh, instead of going direct to VHS to video stores, though it went direct to Netflix, which apparently now is like a death knell, right? Like if you're going direct to Netflix instead of getting the theatrical release, I guess that's, it's not good anymore. Well, Netflix isn't the biggest game in town anymore. I now mean, it, that every, it isn't. Now that, every, now that everyone has their own fucking streaming service, so. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting, you know. First of all, you have to question, like, well, why did Netflix, like, why didn't this go to, like, Shudder or something? You know, like, sh- like a smaller, if it was that, if, if everybody felt like it performed that poorly, you know, why would Netflix jump on it and be like, yeah, we'll take it, you know? Unless they just got the cash money and they're just like, yeah, whatever. We'll take it just simply for the rights because now they have a few other Texas Chainsaw Massacres on there too. So I don't know if it was like a rights thing. Like, yeah, we'll take that and we'll take all the rest of them too if you've got them. Um, but it, it does surprise me that you know it, it did so poorly in theaters and then Netflix jumped all over it. Whereas you would think like if, if it just didn't do well, you would you know you would expect it to go to like a 
I don't want to say lower tier, but it that's what it is, right? Like Shutter can't compete with Netflix. It's not it's not Netflix level. It's owned by AMC, but it's not a huge um, streaming service as yet, and it's very niche. Listen, if they wanted it to die a certain death, they'd put it on Peacock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, or Tubi or something like that. That just is like free, free to watch. You know, like eh, it's going direct to Tubi. It'd suffer through uh, four or five ads in the middle of it, and that's where things go to die now. NBC still can't get it right. Come on, guys. Come on. Well, we got stuff. You can watch. You can watch Seinfeld. We've, we've got the Olympics and the Super Bowl this year. Come on, come on, Bob Costas. Remember Bob Costas? Remember his pink eye? Maybe he'll have something different this time. Oh no, Bob Costas left. Never mind. Oh, we got Walker. We own USA, so that means we got Walker, Texas Ranger. You know what? If they had that, maybe I would. You know, get a Peacock subscription. There you go. Well, so we should say, we should start by saying, yes, doing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And 2022. 2022. And specifically, you know it's the 2022 version because it doesn't have the as an article in it, right? So it's it's not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because then we're drawing attention to the fact that it was only one. This is the second Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> uh, so this is not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre anymore. It is. It could be a. it could be called, be called a, a Texas Chainsaw, <laughs> right? Very generic. A. There's one of them. I don't know which one are we talking about. Tune in to find out. I, I like that we were both thinking of that. Like, yeah. I, like you know, it's which one is it? It's a Texas Chainsaw man. Like like you know like a Hallmark. Like yeah. Hallmark Christmas film with Lacey Chabert. Which one? And if if you really wanted to piss people off, it could be and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Sorry, it's Texas. It has one of the worst education in in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> we tried so hard at grammar and we still failed. Now you now you sad. Well, you also note, uh, took note too that they also uh, put chainsaw as one word and stuff too. That's correct. Yeah the the Th- fashion thoughts. after Toby Hooper's movie was to uh, not have a space between. And you know, to be honest with you. I don't know. In 1973, was that the the uh, the cor- the correct writing of Chainsaw at the time? Because it was literally, I guess you were. I don't know if they were just not, you know, in vogue at that time. It was literally a chain on a saw, so it's chain space saw. I don't know. I, it, that's always been one thing that stood out to me, though, is you know, stylistically, that film never had Chainsaw as one word. Now it's one word. It does on the poster, though. That's the. Yeah, it's odd, right? It's, it's it yeah. never. Um, I guess they were trying to, uh, you know, draw attention away. This is a chainsaw massacre. It is not a table saw massacre. It's not a band <laughs> saw massacre. Jigsaw. Yeah, oh, yeah it's that's not, different. It's not a reciprocating saw re- massacre. Uh, you know, he doesn't carry a sawzall. Could just go on all day. But yeah, I mean, you know, this film has a couple of those distinctions right away. You know, it's it's certainly you can tell like unlike Halloween, which was just like fuck it, we'll name it Halloween again. Make it be confusing. We don't care. Um, <coughs> this film at least has a little bit of a stylistic difference in the title to draw attention away from the fact that it is not the original. But then when you when you start up the movie, like literally first thing talking about. Uh, you know, Gen Z or kids who are going to a uh, ghost town to gentrify it. You're like, this is not Toby Hooper's original. You, you'll know. Not only that, they use the clip, the fu- the documentary clip from the remake, not the yeah, you know, not the original. So we're already like po- poisoning the well right off the fucking. The bat. the lore was set. <laughs> they were basically like, hey. Are you tuning in on Netflix because you saw that this was a horror movie and you don't know what the original is? Here's a re- write up for you that you can. See, I say that ma- it, it makes it. This is canon with the remake, not the, not the original. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I'm putting that out there right now just because of that one little bit. Cause it starts off from the with the O3's documentary, so it's like, all right, yes. Toby Hoop. <laughs> Toby Hooper dodges a bullet. 
<laughs> All right, I guess we should take a break before we get in the, any further into the film. So we'll talk about the beer that we have on the show today. And you would think, you would expect, right, that for um, uh, a film discussion about a, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that we would have a beer <sighs> from Texas on the show. It would just be synergy, right? But you know what? We're, we're doing Shiner Bach, right? <laughs> when I was thinking about it, I said, do we really want to synergize with this Netflix trash? We haven't done that in a while. We, we haven't we, syner- synergized our beer with our we film don't, in a while. You know, we don't want to synergize it. So instead, I went in the opposite direction. I got myself an Italian Pilsner. How do you, maybe Leatherface comes from a long line of Italian folks. Italians, I do hear Italians like to wear faces. Where So that makes sense. Well, the beer that we got on the show today is from Artisanal Brew Works, which is a smaller uh, microbrewery in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, I think we've had them on the show a couple times before. You had, you had to use the, the town's full Christian the, name. The, yeah. The, yes. Yes, I did. Does anyone outside a tourist ever call it Saratoga Springs? I. It's always written out that way. No, I know. That's the name of the town, Saratoga Springs. But does anyone actually ever say? No, no. Like no, said, no one <clears throat> no one actually calls it by its its true full name, which is Saratoga Stinky Springs. <laughs> because of the that, uh, soap say, water. <clears throat> I think I've said it before when we talked about it, because it used to uh, drive me <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, it used to drive oh, me crazy when uh, a little bit when I'd go to SPAC and see Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, because he'd say, Hi, you doing Saratoga Springs? It's like nobody fucking calls it that. You'd be like, You fucking tourist. Same thing. When, like, you know, you go to a show in Troy, and you're like, how you doing, Albany? You're like, or you're at uh, Northern Lights in Clifton Park. And you're like, how you doing, Albany? It's like, no. <laughs> really bothers you. You're not even a townie. It bothers you. Well, because, you know, it's not hard. Yeah. It's not hard to get your geography right. <laughs> it's like being in the Bronx and being like, man, Manhattan swell, isn't it? Yeah, that would, that would probably piss people off. Or, yeah, bad. that would piss people off. So the beer that we got is a joint uh, beer between Artisanal Brew Works and Cafe Capriccio, which is a cafe Capriccio Capriccio. Pina Capriccio. It's Pina a uh, Capriccio. It's an Italian restaurant that's in um, Albany, and I've never been there. But looking at the the pictures and stuff online. Looks very looks, nice, quaint. Looks great. Looks, looks bu- bougie as shit. Looks like uh, grandma would come out and tell you to clean up your shit. Got to go to mass afterwards. Looks like, uh, you know, a nice spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, it's spaghetti. Um, but I've so I've never been there, but I definitely would like to make my way there. It looks nice and looks nice and homey, like, and that's what the Google uh, description says it should be. Homie. Looks like you're in, you know, a little Italian uh, uh, kitchen. A little Italian uh, living room. So I like it. Martin and I said that we we're going to we're gonna have a nice romantic evening out there one day. We better. It's been a long time. Long time coming. The beer that they make is called Beer de Capriccio, uh, which I think roughly translates to the beer of Capriccio. That'd be my guess. I don't speak Italian, of, of course, but uh, I thought it was DiCaprio. That is, oh, you know what? That's true. This is <laughs> the Francis Ford Coppola slash Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio <laughs> brew. I'm sorry, we for, we we messed that up. Yeah, we'll have to do one of these days if when we if we ever do a Coppola film, which I would be all for because he's one of my favorite directors of all time. Uh, do one of his wines, you know? Yeah. I've had one of his vines. I've eaten at his restaurant in uh, San Francisco. Well, wow. How was it? Very good. I think I had a spicy pasta. I think I had like uh, what is that? Uh, spicy ch- pasta. Chicken uh, Chicken something. Chick, chick, chick. I don't know. Ooh, and apparently it was good. Capriccio translates to English as whim. Wow. So. Beer of whim. <laughs> Beer of whimsy. Caf- cafe of whim. 
<laughs> whimsy, whimsy cafe. I'm I like that. Your translation may be a little off, but that's what I typed in. That's on probably Google. the literal translation. It might, yeah. you know, probably means a little bit something else. I'll have to ask my uh, Italian wife who has no sense of Italian. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I typed in Capriccio to Italian to English into Google, and I, bam, bam, whim. Wow. Well, this Italian Pilsner is really, really solid. I think that it it has a very, um, a very, you know, nice, um, refreshing, hoppy, clean taste to it and nice and light. Um, I think it's perfect for like that time frame where you're like spring is coming i'm 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 ready to plant my seeds i think it's really good it's a very solid italian uh, so i'll say it's a solid italian pilsner and in saying that i don't really know what specifically makes an italian pilsner is peroni a pilsner peroni is i believe a pilsner um, I've had Peroni before, and I like Peroni. Um, Peroni tends to have more of a, um, almost like a, uh, almost like a Stella or a, um, what else? Heineken. Yeah, kind of like a Heineken, where you're. It's almost like you're getting just a hint of skunkiness to it. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like. Where they have – they're like just on the edge. And I'm, I say that in a reverential way. Like I, I like those beers. But sometimes Stella particularly has like just just so close to skunk. Well, Heineken doesn't. Stella definitely does. And that's that's what I've um, – that I know from Peroni. So I wouldn't say that I really see a similarity between Peroni and this Biro de Capriccio. But with that said, I I really like the the flavor profile that it has. Can what I say? Like I don't know specifically. Like is it is it like an Italian pilsner? I, I don't. I can't really say that I've had many. Um, not 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 that very uh, available around here. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, is it really good, clean, with a hoppy um, p- profile? Yes, and I I definitely enjoy it. I think it's a uh, a nice solid beer all around. Oh, this is for me. Yeah, it's your turn. Oh, my bad. Um, I like it a lot. Um, uh, as Ryan said too, um, I don't necessarily. I mean, I like Pilsners quite a bit. Um, I don't necessarily know what makes it Italian, like what they kind of do different or kind of like different things to look for. Because again, it's not something that really is uh, at least prevalent around here. Um, but with the, the Pilsner style, it, especially with, with the craft Pilsner style, it's very good, very crisp, very clean, has just the right amount of hoppiness to it to give it nice you know a little bite and it has like a nice little multi sweetness to it i would say it's it's a, like a good like mix between like a a pilsner and i'd say a uh a vienna lager cuz it does have like a like you know bready sweetness to it that you would get from like a vienna lager which is rather similar to like a pilsner uh this is very good um it'd be great if they offered it in like a 12 pack at a reasonable price, they won't. <laughs> but it is very good. It's definitely like a nice, like, as you said, too, like snow's melting. You're getting ready for spring to come. You know, I like it a lot. You know what it actually reminds me a lot of? It reminds me a lot of Founder Solid Gold Pilsner. Yeah, I could see that. The Solid Gold has more of like a limey taste to it. But I, I don't know about the liminess, but but I like it a lot. Um, if it's available to you and you like pilsners, I'd say give it a whirl. It's uh, very good. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be available to most people. 
No. They don't, I, they don't get. They don't really get out too far. Apparently, I checked into the wrong one. Maybe. Yeah, you did. You, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't know if it, you're gonna find it too easily. But um, if you do, give it a whirl because it's it's pretty tasty. And if you are uh, in the Albany area, search out Cafe Capriccio. Capriccio. <laughs> Good with uh, with rolling those R's. I'm not saying. So I mean, I'm only good because I know Spanish. True. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Let's get into this Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a movie. It ended the end. It's true. All right. We'll see you next week yeah. with uh, hopefully Scream Five. So let's start out by saying that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is ultimately trying to be Halloween of Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Like which Halloween though? Halloween 2018. Ha- I was gonna say is Halloween 1978, Halloween 2000, oh, no. oh, no. 2007, Halloween 2018, Halloween no. 2018 for oh, sure. Okay, okay, okay. It uh, you know it is definitely one. It's it definitely seems like somebody was like, wow. Halloween 2018 really worked out for the Halloween franchise. Like, what if we do the same with Texas Chainsaw Massacre? We could effectively set it in the present. We could, you know, have the final girl come back and profit from that, right? Because that's an easy scenario to set up. And so I feel like that was maybe what Fede Alvarez brought to this, you know, when they credits him with story that was literally like the i'm gonna write like a one paragraph treatment of what i think you should do (laughs) and then that was his contribution he said thank you very much i'll take my fifty thousand dollar check now and he got the fuck out of there because he said that that ship's going down so ultimately i think that this idea really started as let's do texas chainsaw massacre like halloween 2018 and that's really all we need to do. And so I find that ultimately this movie is super, super lean on an actual story. It really has nothing going on in it at whatsoever. The most creative element to it is the whole opening setup to get these people to the Texas ghost town where it's set. Harlow! That, that's like the do most. Think, do you, you know, think it's based off of Red Harlow from the Red Dead franchise? Yeah, I think that's probably a stretch, but <laughs> can, we can we can pretend. I mean, make it better. Think like, oh, that, that's that's where Red Harlow <laughs> was. Oh, well, there you go. If it makes it better for you, then yeah, go ahead and pretend all day. Okay, I'm there. But I think um, you know because they were just like we're gonna copy the formula. Um, they didn't really feel the need to come up with much of a story, and ultimately, the the most the most that they put into the story was that that opening element. Like they were like, "Well, we got to have something that gets them there, right?" Like, you know, they can, Letterface just can't show up randomly, so we got to get them there. So the idea of having you know gentrification of unlikable characters who come in and they are effectively trying to buy out a ghost town, which has happened like some you know that's that's actually been in the news of a guy who basically bought a ghost town for super cheap and he just lives there by himself that's a little different than what's happening in this movie because they're really trying to gentrify the place and and turn it into like almost like a cityscape of places that hipster gen z guy kids like to to frequent an oasis out in the middle of texas out in the middle of nowhere and it is funny too because um, the one the one character I think you call him lower rent Ryan Gosling yes um, the, rolls coal on these fucks <laughs> the uh, yeah that guy um, <laughs> who is basically fixing up the the facade of the front of the town so that they can sell it he he basically says like oh um, you know you guys are coming in here you know trying to fix up the place and. Ultimately, just gentrify it. And the film really makes no attempt to hide the fact that that's what it's saying that they're doing. Like, um, 
I, the, like one of the first lines that's uttered in the film by a, a, a townie, it, he says, gentrifuckers. Like, you know, no, this didn't go over my head, but now it's certainly implanted there, very explicit as to what is, is particularly happening here. But, um, Let's talk about the fact that these kids who are like 24 years old somehow got like a bank to be like, yeah, you go. Damn yeah, th- I think that's the <laughs> one of the more, more ridiculous things too because, you know, you're buying up a whole ghost town. You got to get a loan for it. And immediately the bank was like, sure, all in. Let's go check it out and see if it's someplace that people would be interested in. And the whole Not idea a- of them – all traveling there to create a different like a, a like a township is just ultimately ridiculous in the hands of the the characters that we get like there's no i don't i don't think of them as like brilliant entrepreneur startups um going to start a restaurant robber barons they really yeah. don't have much of a plan whatsoever it's and, it, well not only that it's just fucking ridiculous cuz again like they're like you you see him making cracks like oh late stage capitalism. <laughs> That's like what are you doing? We plan on gentrifying this area and making it into a yeah, high level bourgeois area of you know utopian art and culture and smack dab in the middle of butt fuck Texas. And Richter calls them basically a cult too, right? <laughs> he's like yeah. He's like, yeah, you guys sound like a cult to me. He's like, we're well. He's like, you guys a cult? I'm like, no, we're ideal idealistic. And he's like, yeah, you're a fucking cult. <laughs> I mean, I just ultimately I don't think that the idea is is that realistic. But I do give some some props to the writer Chris Thomas Devlin for that as being at least the one creative element to this movie because the rest of it is really generic. Uh, has very little plot going on. That at but least took a little bit of thought. But it's so bare. It's so it doesn't really take that much thought because it's been like a hot topic for a long time. But it's just like kind of it's slapdash. It's just there. Like what can we say? Oh yeah, they're there to gentrify this town, this ghost town. Well, I think the fact that they set it in like this ghost town is kind of interesting. That they were you know buying up this ghost town and. In Texas, and then um, trying to sell off the f- storefronts. I think that's a like a at least a creative approach to it. I just don't think that the rest of it works at all. Like it's just not believable. Um, you know, the, the other th- stupid thing about it is that they brought in a gigantic party bus full of other shitheads that are around the same age as them, who are, are apparently are loaded with mom's mom and dad's money. Who are buying up these storefronts for ridiculous prices to this start is, a comic book shop or an art gallery? Yeah, this is where we'll put the art gallery. It's like, wow, isn't that just the fucking dumbest thing you've? What kind of economy I, I do you think that this ghost town in the middle of nowhere is going to have? It runs on hopes and dreams. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I run a coffee shop. All right, these guys are going to come over here and they're going to buy my coffee. I'm going to go we over there tell- and I'm going to buy a couple comic books and then we're going to go broke real fast because <laughs> no one's coming out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost town for got, a reason. Got, got ten people here. Well, my pour over is gonna go over well with them. Yeah, you know, it's well, it's like uh, Yakko's Wish, the Animaniacs Christmas movie. The hay penny's gonna go throughout the town. It's like and just make everyone rich. The uh, <laughs> the my fair trade coffee from Guatemala is costing me, you know, fifty <laughs> percent more than I'm making on the profit. I'm going out of business very soon. <laughs> Yeah, the it's, the whole idea is just stupid. It I just make... I just want to be that loan officer at the bank, like as they sit down, and, like tell them, like like we we want to, because they're like from San Francisco or some shit like that. And I just want to be like them, like sitting at like a, like you know Bank of America and be like, we have a great idea that's going to be a money winner. Okay, the, and not only <laughs> that, but I can see them saying like, we have an idea that no one's ever had before. <laughs> Right. No one's ever had this idea before. You guys have never heard it before. All we need is a $550,000 loan and we'll make it work. And then, you know, like something absolutely astronomically ridiculous. 
Like, and what kind of what kind of credit are you are you thinking of putting that on? Like, a no interest. Uh, we have no year loan. Well, we have no credit. To begin <laughs> we <laughs> we have no credit to begin with, really, because we're still we just got out of college and we have eighty. I, I'm ninety thousand dollars in student loan debt because I went to Occidental because I wanted to be an actor. So you know, uh, <laughs> I want to watch that movie of like like you know at the bank like. <laughs> Kids. That was that. That would be the real Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> them the getting bank the first, dashing the, hopes and dreams. <laughs> get, they get the, they get that first letter in the mail. Here, like here's what you owe. It's like oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, where 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 where, where in that plot of land would you put the artisanal craft brewery to? They had like a little saloony looking place. Yeah, you know, turn that into like you know, nice. Uh, s- and where where are they going to get the arugula for, and kale for the salads that they make at their local? Yeah, they can't just plant it. Darn. Yeah, no. It, but I, what I like too is just like all of these investors riding up on a party bus, fucking having an auction, and then basically slinking back to the party bus mm. and having a grand old time on the party bus with uh, strobe lights and soft music. Yeah, that nice bus from 1955. Pretty sure that's the same one Rosa Parks had on, too. <laughs> yeah, I dis... Yeah, you're right. The The whole idea is really ridiculous, but then... But th- we haven't even tackled, like, some of the more ridiculous elements of this, just the oh, setup. Oh, it gets, it gets more ridiculous? Oh, it does. Oh. So, uh, pr- apparently, you know, and the film also has, like, no inkling of just, like, um, maybe having some surprises, because literally everything that happens is, like, on the nose, yep, that's, you know, that's that. So, you would think, like, the initial scene where we get where they go into this lady's house, this adoption center, and she's in there. And then we see this giant hulking character appear on the stairs. You're like, oh, that's not going to be Leatherface because we would they they wouldn't show that like right away, right? Like they would they're just you know that's just like a like a, a a surprise for us that we we think it's Leatherface and it's not going to be like no nope that is Leatherface that the the film ha- holds no surprises for you. It literally just. <laughs> shows everything just yep what you think is what you get and that's that's part of the major you know one of the major problems with this film is like it doesn't know how to be implicit at all it it literally is just as open and outspoken as it can be um if whether that be like the gentrification themes or the idea of of like school shootings oh, oh my god um, it, that it is, is just Extremely the most, on the nose. That is the most tacked on. Who gives a shit of this film? Well, one of the girls. She, why? Why? Why is your sister treating you like you know you're? You need help. Why well, was that a school shooting? <laughs> I've been like, shot once. She just says, yeah, nonchalantly. Yeah, it's it's very it's very on the nose. It's it's just uh. The film doesn't really know how to tackle those subjects in any sort of implied manner. And again, it's not something that you, for the most part, in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> film, that you'd be you'd be looking for. You'd be like, hey, that's a little, uh, a little too much. It, Pull yeah, it down a bit. And I think the thing with that too is like the film just never, just doesn't do anything with any of these points, like. Okay, so you know Dante and Melody, they're chefs. Like the the film literally just tells us they're chefs. We're taking a like on that, and that's the, their character uh, from, development from the Tic Tac. I'm assuming they're from the Tic Tac. <laughs> yeah, they're chefs on the Tic Tac. You know, it the the film just doesn't do anything with that, and I, that's part of the reason why the movie's 80 minutes long because it has nothing, nothing to say. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. It literally is a movie. And that's – sometimes that's fine, right? Like you can have a movie that doesn't have anything to say. It literally is presenting you with a very uh, hostile, tense situation. And that is Toby Hooper's original. 
and there was some themes about outsiders and 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 dealing in um things that you don't understand like out in the the boonies as in the you know the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre um but it still had things to say and, and, and it was tense and it had suspense to it that you didn't really need an overarching plot to it um whereas in this movie I feel like there's just literally nothing going on and that means the the last like half hour just evolves into running away from Leatherface like multiple times multiple people coming back from near death experiences to then face Leatherface again literally I think there's maybe like three or four times where Leatherface appears dead and then is not um, and it just becomes even more, like and more and more exhausting and exasperating the, the longer it goes on. You're like, holy shit, would somebody just either fucking die or fucking kill somebody else at this point? Like, I'm I'm so over this movie. I have seen um, people say like, oh, I made it to like the last 15 minutes and it was just so terrible. I had to turn it off. And I absolutely understand. I At first I was like, well, you're 15 minutes out. Like, why? why? Why would you do that? But now, after seeing it, I totally understand why that is. Because I don't think you get it's, to what? Well, it's not that bad. It's bad, but it's not like uh, I well, gotta check out. Yeah, I mean, I I understand what they're saying though, because at a certain point, you're just like, why won't this end? Like, there's literally <laughs> nothing else to do. Either someone kill someone kill someone, or I'm going to kill my TV. <laughs> I think that's you know that's the ultimate thing, and then not only that, but the, but Lila and Melody, you're just like I don't care who survives here. I literally don't. I really, you know what? If Lila doesn't survive, you know, she, okay, she's the most unlucky person alive. She lived through a fucking school shooting and a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, the poor girl. God said fuck you in particular, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> so be it. Have a nice life next time. Hopefully it's – hopefully you don't end up in like, you know, Indian poverty or something. Jesus Christ. I'm just hoping for to see her in the, the new iteration of Final Destination. Exactly, yeah. I mean and, and she does even say that too. She's like, I, I brought it here. I was supposed to die. But again, you just – you really don't care too much about what's going to happen to them because – I don't know. There's just no – you don't even have any like feeling for <laughs> any of these characters. That tends – that does sometimes tend to happen um, in slasher movies. You know, like you you don't really care too much about the um, the protagonists uh, and, and that's because they're made to be fodder. But at the same time, like, you know, at least they should have they, – they needed to do a little bit more with the characters here where – they actually had some sort of personality rather than just like basically stick figures. Yeah, no, they're definitely an unlikable group. Like uh, the I, whole, be- the whole, the whole beginning where they're at the convenience store or whatever the hell, the gas station, that's supposed to be like the one from like no country for old men. Mm-hmm. I was expecting Javier Bardem to come creeping out, you know, <laughs> ask him to flip the fucking coin, but <clears throat> You know, the whole, like, guy comes up and he's, you know, with his nice Dodge Ram pickup, you know, Cummins Diesel, and they're like, instead of, like, snidely saying under your breath, like, why is he carrying a gun? Oh, this guy's kind of a hick. And they're like, yo, this asshole, look at this gun, is he a douchebag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, and it's like, and it's like, wow, it's like, wow, you made yourself the unlikable one. Wait, what do you, what do you think the real point of that is? Like, why, why make your main character so unlikable? Yes, they're going to, they're ending up dying, but like, ultimately, in a movie, you're not generally rooting for the killer to murder all these people, right? Well, like, because the, she does end up being the final girl. Spoiler. Well, I think, like, it just is interesting to me because it doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't add any um, stakes to your film because if you don't care about the characters, then there's nothing keeping you in, you know, interested in what, what happens to them. I don't know if their intention was to, like, make Leatherface the main point here um, and make us side with Leatherface in some capacity, but I also don't do that because I really don't know even what Leatherface's ultimate goal is here. 
Um, or, or give a shit. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. The The film d- tries to do both, right? It tries to um, give Leatherface some, some um, context of, like, this is why Leatherface is who he is. And then at the same time, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so for some reason, Leatherface, from the end of you know, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre winds up in this adoption center um, with this old lady, you know, well, she obviously she wasn't old at the time, but Ginny, Ginny, she, she, he winds up there. She takes care of him uh, up until this point when he's an old man. Is she supposed to be like a relative or something? I think she's just, I think we're just supposed to get like, she's, a, you know, adopting people and she adopted him. But Ultimately, she became like a mother figure, and we all know that like family means something to the you know Leatherface and his clan. But at the same time, like I just do not understand the motivation. Like, is it supposed to be again like that mother figure of you know Justice League and you know Superman, Batman shit? Uh, oh my God, my mother! You killed my mother, Martha. Yeah. <laughs> Or or something else like I don't really quite understand it like and the other thing is like are we supposed to believe that Leatherface is just you know once he got adopted he you know settled down and was like you know what I really probably shouldn't have murdered all those people um, back at the farm I think I'll live out my life here with my chew and <laughs> uh, my mama and our Confederate flag you know just hating on the blacks like normal people do down here and. Uh, you know, I, I just don't, I don't I don't get it. It doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. Like, it, why I don't know why they decided to go this route with Leatherface. Um, you know, take him away from the farm. The other the other thing that I think is stupid is like, so they treat Texas Chainsaw Massacre like it is like some mysterious unsolved mystery. Like somehow these teens ended up at this farmhouse and they all just died. They all just got ripped to shreds by chainsaws but we don't know what happened there <laughs> Who, it's like in 50 years someone was not able to put together the pieces of like who's on the deed what happened here <laughs> like you know and then not only that well, but well, the, it's, a, it's a town of like four people so you know but not only that like Texas chainsaw massacre you know obviously that massacre had happened at that time but th- people Obviously, we're disappearing for longer than that. You know, the family themselves are uh, had been doing this for a long period of time, and then to think that Leatherface just randomly, like one day, just like you know what, I uh, I I think I did some wrong, so <laughs> I'm just gonna you know stop doing that now and and live out peacefully. I just I don't understand. You know, it doesn't work like in Halloween 2018 where Michael was actually put away. Literally in an insane asylum, cannot well, do anything. Well, see, that's where, like, again, like the parallels are so like uncanny. It's like, okay, in the 2018 Blumhouse film, he's he's been put away in an asylum. Here, well, what's like an asylum? We'll put him in an orphanage. So he's still like, oh, he's childlike too. Yeah, I, I, isn't I just, that isn't that nuanced? I just I, I don't really understand what they were going for there. I don't. I just it just is is a weird storyline that I don't think works in in general in this movie. Um so I just really question it. Like I I don't I don't get it. So, what did you think of the kills in this movie? Because the kills are brutal. It's it really leans heavily on the gore. Um what did what did you think? So they're not bad. I mean, not, nothing's creative, really spectacular. Um, they're all very you know generic. Um, but like Halloween Kills, they just kind of feel the need to kind of like just oh make it more brutal and visceral, and then it'll get people to be like. Ugh. But at the same time, it was more comedic. Like some of the shit, like when Ryan Gosling's fighting Leatherface. And giving him a good run for his money, and then Leatherface hits him with a fucking hammer. It doesn't like you know, he doesn't like just hit him like and like slow him down. He fucking as Gosling's beating the shit out of him, like you know he cricks his knee in the other direction with the fucking hammer. <laughs> it's fun. and then the hammer toss. Oh, the hammer toss is the best part of the fucking film when he's sitting <laughs> there and 
Uh, low rent Ashley Birch gets hit in the fucking sternum with a hammer. Yeah, he it gets the ye- hammer. It gets yeeted through the fucking like he's the fucking trunch ball. <laughs> fucking yeets, <laughs> yeets the hammer at her. She gets yeeted down into the basement. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> Yeah, and and it doesn't really even. She's not even hurt. She's just like, oh, that was that was in, inconvenient. I fell through the floor. Um, I I I think that the the gore is brutal. It's not bad for the beginning of the film. I think it worked out fairly well. Um, at the beginning when you first start to see what he's capable of, and um, like the scene in the van, I thought was was pretty cool. Uh, where he breaks the guy's wrist and then uses it to like stab him in the neck and then you know shoots the uh, other cop in the driver's seat uh i thought those worked out really well but where where the film really lost me is at the bus scene where he literally derails a bus driving (laughs) somehow i don't know how i still don't know how but he is like being on like the jurassic park ride at universal studios and it's just like uh, all of a sudden, you hear the chainsaw revving, and then the bus is just, oh, it's dismantled. What happened? I don't know, but this moving bus at 30 miles per hour was just taken apart by, by you know, Bubba and his chainsaw. <laughs> no, the best part of that, that whole thing, he gets on the bus and all these assholes, as they're si- he's sitting there revving the fucking chainsaw up, pull their phones out, and the one guy's like, better not, we'll cancel you. Yeah, it's, uh, even that guy was like, "I can't believe I need to say this." You know what I mean? Like, he, and then he, he gets properly fucking just gored with the fucking yeah, chainsaw. Even that guy was just like, "Ah, oh, this line." <laughs> Do I have to? You know. I mean, so. Like I thought it was it was fine up until that point and that's where the movie like really lost me in, entirely. That scene really reminded me of Halloween Kills when Michael kills every single firefighter. <laughs> yeah, the... Um it goes was, right it, through him. And not only that, but you get like some Wilhelm screams in there. It's like you got ah! like, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> and just overall really a lot of goofiness that's occurring on that bus. Um, not not to mention the fact that just before our protagonist, who just got showered and shit in the basement as as Leatherface cuts through a sewer pipe, um, runs on the bus. Everybody's still partying like nothing's happening. Like no, nothing. Nobody's like, man, what the fuck is that smell? It smells like shit through the entire bus. I know, I know, who, I know. who shit themselves around <laughs> here? You know, no no one no one says anything about that. You know, as she's covered in shit, standing in the middle of this party bus. Um, yeah, poor, that whole bit where she was underneath the house getting chased by the chainsaw, all I could think to myself, like, well, this is like Black Christmas 06 with Lacey Chabert. Yeah. But she makes it onto the bus just to be, you know, <laughs> just like, that was the best part, though. It's like, oh, she's covering shit. Everyone's still partying. Like, yeah, I can't smell that. I know. It's, it's like, all right. is Caitlin Bennett here? We all got COVID. You can't smell. Um. Yeah. So, like I said, the, the the gore was fine until that point. Then it really lost me, and then the film completely lost me. Anyway, like I just I didn't really. I just wanted to end at that point. You know, there's constant pop ups, constant like, I'm the hero. No, I'm the hero. No, I survived for a, through a shooting, so I'm the hero. No, I'm the hero. I'm your big sister. No, <laughs> I'm the hero. Leatherface is just like, uh, let me deploy my chainsaw ninjutsu. Uh, throwing chainsaws <laughs> across the floor as it skitters around and sh- slices her Achilles heel. Just, uh, uh, uh. And you know what? You were right to say, too. This film is not incredibly bad. I've seen way worse movies. I feel like Friday the 13th, the remake, is a worse movie than this. Still, it just it makes me exhausted to think about like how it could have been and what it ends up being. Um, I don't think it's a... A truly terrible movie. Um, it's watchable. It's fine, but it's just it's it's on, honestly not a good movie. I would never tell somebody like you should you should go watch it. <laughs> you weren't sitting there saying like Sarah Yarkin left you speechless after this, and no you need to. No, and the other 
the other part about it too is that ending. The not, not the uh, post credits ending, but the the ending before the credits. It's like the original. Well, yeah, I mean they have the whole running out into the road, chainsaw dance type thing. But I again, again, it was, I was just like fucking end it, please. Like we we don't need this many like is he dead? No, he's not dead. Is she dead? No, she's not dead. Um, it just kept going. It just literally was like one thing after another. Um, and at that point, at the end, I was just like, let them get out. Just let them go. <laughs> well, this also enters the territory with like Halloween where you're totally losing the mystique of Michael Myers. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. With like, you know, by making him like a unstoppable force and just like this demon that can't be stopped. Because from the original film, uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there you wouldn't have any inkling that you know he's like some impervious demon. He could, he's again the horrors and the fact that he's a regular human being that commits these atrocities. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you sh- you know so chilling. Here they do the same thing like they do the Michael Myers, just fucking you know. Gas him up to a thousand, like, yeah, he he got hit a couple of times by shotgun shells. Who cares? Still trucking. Eight, nine-year-old man, he's still fucking going fine. Doesn't give a shit. Oh, my God. Just reminded me. We didn't even mention the non-impact that Sally, coming back 50 years later, has on the movie. Who? So, it's, it's so again, they used the Halloween 2018 uh, scenario of let's get the final girl back from the original. Um, unfortunately, it's not Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> oh yeah, th- that too. But unfortunately, the final girl from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Marilyn Burns, she died. So they literally, unless they were going to resurrect her in some magical spell, they literally could not have Marilyn Burns come back as Sally. So they so get like- some other lady. Some old Irish woman to run around and <laughs> yeah, I'm a Texas Ranger, <laughs> which I you know what the best part is is like she's been she, she has perfect chance to kill him, and then she's like fifty years thinking about this. Do you remember me? And the Leatherface just fucks off, and he, she's like she doesn't remember me. So yeah, you because you you don't fucking matter. And then she gets yeeted, at, she gets yeeted herself. So it's like you know. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I mean, I think the thing with that is like they u- so they use Sally, and they wanted to make use of the fact that she returned, but then she's ultimately just a non-starter. It like you don't care about her. She's extremely goofy, and I I don't really mean to say that about the actress Owen Fuere. I don't know how to say her name. O- Owen Fuere. Well, you need to learn some Irish, bud. But, you know, I think that it's, you know, it's not necessarily her fault, but they did really try to make her super goofy, uh, hardened uh, soldierette sort of thing, and it doesn't really work that well in this movie. Um, I think that ultimately they just wasted that. They didn't really do anything with it. She doesn't really have an impact on anything one way or the other besides being basically like a mosquito to Leatherface. Uh, oh, that's annoying. <laughs> she just shot me just, again yep. with a shotgun from across the alleyway. Um, I don't know. I just – I felt like they just really wasted what they could have done with Sally. And, you know, they didn't even really copy the formula from Halloween because, like I said, she's only in three or four scenes really. And it's it's kind of like an afterthought. Like they saw Halloween twenty eighteen and they're like, that'd be really good to include in ours too. And then they just put it in there. Um what did you think about the after credit scene? Eh, fine. It didn't do anything for me. I really think like they should have just like that should have been the idea anyway. He, he goes back to the farm. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if that's supposed to be. Is that supposed to be like, oh, next time we're gonna be at the farm where you wanted it to be this time? I don't know. But I f- I feel like that post credits was just like a a hint to the viewers, like, oh, we could come back and do another one, and the viewers are like, no, 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 we're good, we're good. Like that's okay. Thanks, but no thanks. 
<laughs> Alright. What else did we talk about? Did we cover everything that you wanted to say? Yeah, that's about it. I think that's it for me, too. I, I pretty much uh, got everything in that I had to say about this movie. <laughs> All right, so we got to rate it on a scale of uh, 0 to 10 overprivileged Gen Zer restaurateurs. Gentrificationers. What would you give <clears throat> Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Um, I'd give it a five and a half. It's it's watchable. Um, It's a slog. Even at like an hour and 20, it's like a slog at points, but it's watchable. Uh, the gore itself, though not very creative, there's enough of it to like keep it like engaging as a slasher film. There's too many, too many like stupid story points and like characteristics of these characters that you don't give a shit about that are just kind of annoying and kind of there because it's like it's the 2020s. Let's kind of slap slap these in, make it all slapdash. Um, none of the characters are likable. They're all a bunch of Dickheads and douches. Um, other than that, and again, it, maybe I don't find this film that offensive overall because again, I don't have any great like love or nostalgia for the franchise outside of the original film. So to me, it's not like I'm watching, you know, like with like Indiana Jones, the King of the Crystal Skull, and you're watching Indy get raped. Here, it's 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 not the same for me. The only the one oh the one thing we did not mention is Leatherface's mask is putrid and awful looking. That is true. It is a terrible mask. It's on levels of like Halloween Five's mask, or is it four? I can't ever remember. It's four or five that has the fucking god awful mask. Um, well, both of them do, but five is worse. Um. Yeah, I get like I said, five and a half. It's it's if you're looking for a quick watch to kind of just watch people get fucking mowed down, check it out. Other than that, it, it, there's nothing really here. It's not that very entertaining of a film, that well thought out or anything. Uh, the fact that it apes so much from the Halloween, the Blumhouse Halloween, you might as well just watch Blumhouse Halloween and be much more entertained. Yeah, I agree. I'd probably give it a five. I think that it is not a horrible movie, but in a, it is watchable. But I didn't really find myself enjoying it much at all. You know, I think that the film has a lot of issues with its plot, starting off with that it doesn't really have one. The ending, of it, like, it just shows as it gets further and further into the movie that it really has no point to it. Um, the 80 minute runtime should be a, a cue right there. Like that doesn't have that much to say. Um, the last 30 minutes or so are just literally like running away from Leatherface over and over and over again as people keep popping up, not dead. <laughs> Leatherface is not dead. No one dies. And you're just like, let's get on with it. Um, it really apes Halloween quite a bit. Um, but it just doesn't do it as well. And, Ultimately, you will probably end up not liking any of the characters, including Leatherface, because of his ratty ass mask. <clears throat> um, and the film really leaves it questionable, even what it wants you to feel about the whole situation. Like, are we supposed to feel uh, upset about Leatherface's situation? Are we supposed to feel for the, for the uh, like protagonist that we have? It doesn't. None of it really lands. Um, the whole thing is centered around a really ridiculous plot line. And uh, ultimately, you know, the only real draw here is the gore effects, which are fairly good towards the beginning of the movie. Once it gets towards that bus scene, uh, it gets more like CGI blood and guts. And um, because there's just so much going on uh, with the massacre that it, you know, it has no um, ability to do practical effects at that point. Um. Other than that, like like I said, it's watchable. Um, I don't think it's as bad as some of the remakes from the the two thousands that we've done, but it's not a good movie, and it certainly doesn't do any justice to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, and I probably wouldn't be clamoring for a sequel anytime soon. All right, so that's it for our episode on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, next week, I believe we're going to be doing Leprechaun into Hood. 
uh, Leprechaun Back to the Hood, I'm sorry. Um, How dare you. Because we are going to be very close to St. Patty's Day. Don't put a morning into you. Uh, so we're beardy one on the show for next week. Um, Play the Guinness. Do like the most, you know, yeah. offensive. Uh... Smittix? No. Killians? No. Um, it should be a fun episode. Never seen Leprechaun back to the hood, so uh, it will be... <laughs> I think only four people have. <laughs> it will be a, a new experience for the both of us. Um, if it's if it's half as good as Leprechaun in the Hood, I we're going to be, be. I can like not even remember <laughs> Leprechaun in the Hood. That's because it was not memorable in the least. Like I said, if it's half as good as that movie, then we're g- going to be turning it off halfway through. Oh my god! When did when did we lo- was it Lep- Leprechaun three is where like everything went like you know. Mm. I mean, I feel like even I feel like the the I, to be honest with you, the film franchise itself is just not that good to begin with. Even Leprechaun one is really not that good of a movie. Um, no, it's not. But I mean, ju- <sighs> only notable for Jennifer Aniston being in it. Yeah, how dare you! How dare you short sell short sell Warwick Davis? Janiston. No. I, I think you know, the whole franchise is really not that great, but um maybe maybe three was the jumping off point where we're like, all right, this is not a great you know, we're not having a great time anymore. Leprechaun, <laughs> you know. But We'll see. Maybe Leprechaun Back to the Hood is like so entertaining. It's so, just so hilarious. We're going to love it. Listen, I think the fact that we missed out last year means we just need to say, call it quits and move on to the WWE one. No, no just not even, <laughs> not even finish it out. There's a 2018 Leprechaun? Yeah, there's a WWE one. There's a sci fi one that was on Sci Fi Channel. There's- that's the 2018 one. Yeah, yeah, Leprechaun Origins, the WWE one. I'm talking about... Yeah, there was another one for, for um, sci-fi. Couldn't it even get Warwick Davis for that one, huh? Nope. He must have been too busy f- filming part of Idiot Abroad. So we're we're going to be back next week, so we're continuing the streak. And then it's, pro- it's probably going to just c- keep on right on continuing. Are we going to do an Easter movie this year? There's Easter films. Um, Critters 2 is an Easter movie. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about maybe like uh, Last Temptation at Christ. <laughs> yeah, the Ten Commandments, something like that. No, Ten Command. No, Ten Command. No. You took a Bible class, for God's sakes. No, Ten Commandments n- would not be it. It has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus. I was just a Christian spitballing spitball. ba- bad ideas. Because it's like four hours long. Charlton you, Heston is in it, I think, right? Do, do, why don't we do Ben Hur as well? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we're going to do the Batman, right? And that's coming up. That's four. like six hours long. Listen, that's getting. It's like the Langoliers length. <laughs> that's getting 10 on 10. Not for me on principle. Just to bring the <laughs> average down, I'm giving it a four. <laughs> Just to hurt it. All right. So thanks uh, for- uh, from the looks of it, I mean, not to get, I mean, I'm not, I haven't really been like diving too deep into it, but I've seen, like, I haven't read the reviews, but I've seen it's been getting good reviews basically saying that, you know, it's Batman gritty. So it's like, oh. So now it's been like almost 20 years since The Dark Knight, and now it's like back to like, this is what Batman's supposed to be. Gritty. Which, as I told you, if that's the case, then instead of having Batman do all this stupid shit, the, every film in his rogues gallery should just be like, you know, his realistic villains. Zaz, Professor Pig, uh, the ventriloquist, Riddler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No comment. Fine. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm glad that it's grittier. I I appreciate grittiness too. I know, but like, 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 what does it mean by grittier? I mean, like, I don't know. Just, it's always uh, a vi- no uh, no um, foreigner songs on the soundtrack. 
Once I rose above the no Oh, yeah, that's Kansas. <laughs> Carry out my wayward song. Yeah, the soundtrack is not like your um, classic rock station. Your local classic rock station. Picks 106. Waking up with the wolf. Free beer and hot wings. And you know what? I'd be impressed if uh, this film had like free beer and hot wings in it. All right. Well, when are, when are we starting our own uh, morning sh- radio morning show? This is it. This is our morning show. You can listen to it at any time, morning, evening, or night. Morning, afternoon, or night. Well, if you want to listen to it at any time, you can tune in on pretty much any podcasting app you can think of. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, our home base at anchor.fm. You can subscribe onto all those and like us, leave us a nice review. Appreciate that. Uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash blood and black rum, Twitter at blood and black rum uh, on Facebook. Now we did link our podcast on there so you can get a nice little version of it on Facebook if that's how you listen to your podcast. So kind of cool there. Um, really the only reason to get a Facebook page is to subscribe to us on there. Um, we also have a email address at blood and black rum podcast at gmail.com. You can write to us, let us know what you like, what you don't like. What you want to hear us cover, and we'll take that into consideration. And you can donate to us on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash blood and black rum podcast. Anything you send our way will go back towards beer. So thanks a lot for that. And uh, other than that, we are going to be back next week with our St. Patty's Day episode. Um, we hope you tune in, and thanks for listening to us as we go weekly here. Um, we've been putting in the work. Hopefully, you've been enjoying it, and we hope you enjoy and come back for next time. Until then. Take care. I won't be here for that episode. <laughs> you won't be here? Call it out. Call it in sick. That's right. Well, that's okay. I can do one by myself. It's no problem. All right. All right. Deal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Take care.